Hey everybody, welcome back to the Industrial Revolution. Let's do a quick review of where we are at. We mentioned in former videos that the Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain from 1750 to 1850. And of course, on my whiteboard, the symbol I chose to use, of course, was Great Britain itself. And then we talked about some advantages that Britain had that they took advantage of. And we listed eight of those that were on the board. And we said that, you know, it probably isn't just one of these that caused the IR to begin in Great Britain, but it was probably a combination of all of these and maybe some other ones. But these are the eight that I put up on the board. And uh, here they are, I'll just list them right here. Great Britain had natural resources. They had, uh, they had an agricultural revolution. They had um, capital to invest in machines and new technologies. They had government policies that were pro-business. They had an entrepreneurial class of people willing to take a risk and step out to start a business. They also had um, the transportation systems, the population, the markets. And so if you look at all those eight that are listed there, in combination were probably um, some of the factors that led the IR to beginning in Great Britain. So today we're gonna focus on the energy sources, the first industries, and then the inventions of the early IR. So the energy sources were initially water. You know, most of these um, cotton mills and factories early on would have been located near a water source because many machines were powered by water. But then the first real energy source and the biggest one of the first IR would have been coal. We already mentioned that uh, Britain had a lot of coal and it was easily accessible. So coal right here, coal was by far the number one energy source of the first IR. And of course, so there is, well, several carts of coal I have here. And those are my uh, representation of my energy sources. Now, the first industries, the first industries were textiles and mining. Textiles is just basically the uh, turning, uh, turning cotton into cotton cloth to make clothing. It's the clothing industry, as textiles. Um, and of course, for that, here it is, there's my clothing, two items of clothing here. And that right there, if you didn't know, uh, was my uh, uh, textile factory. My uh, textile factory right there to represent the industry. So, um, so textiles and then mining. And with mining, you had both coal and ultimately then iron ore because with the advent of the railroad, you needed uh, tracks for the trains to run on. So yeah, you needed uh, iron ore. So um, those were the two, um, uh, the two mining industries. So um, let's focus now on some of the event inventions of the first IR. I tell you, we could add a whole board list of inventions here. I would encourage you on your own to, to go uh, do your research on the first IR and look up some of the significant inventions. But I just listed a few of them here to give you a little bit of an example. But um, one, you had the spinning jenny. The spinning jenny um, allowed spinners to turn cotton into cotton thread. But along with that, you also had the invention of the water-powered loom, which allowed weavers to keep up with the spinners by taking the thread and then turning it into cloth. So those were two early textile um, innovations there, the spinning jenny and the water powered loom. But then you have something right here. And you know what? This might be the biggest of the big of inventions. Um, and that's the steam engine. You know, initially the steam engine was designed to merely pump water out of coal mines so you could dig down deeper and get more coal. But then eventually, coal is gonna be used to actually power these machines. So all of a sudden, these machines and factories didn't necessarily need to be located near water. And of course, along with that, you also have the invention of the steam locomotive, which is a totally, absolutely transformational change in um, transportation source. I mean, uh, with a steam locomotive, now you have a way to transport both raw materials to the factory and finished products to your various markets to sell. And so now materials are gonna be 
become cheaper because transportation is going to go down and the locomotive is going to be a much faster, quicker, more efficient a way, again, to deliver both raw materials and finished products. So the steam locomotive is absolutely, totally revolutionary. And that, uh, you know, in my opinion, might be the single greatest invention of the IR. Of course, I'm sure that could be debated as well. So, um, but uh, there it is, guys. There's my, there's my image of the steam locomotive and the engineer hauling um, his train load of coal um, to the factory. So the last thing I have uh, on the board here is then the factory system itself, the factory system itself. The fact that with the advent of the factory system, you don't need to make clothing in individual homes in the old cottage industry system, okay? Now you have a factory, self-contained um, place that housed the machinery and uh, the people, and they would come and they would punch your time clock and they would work their shift. And uh, with a factory, all the machines were there and you could literally run 24-7, run okay? Um, the factory system just absolutely, totally revolutionized production by allowing these manufacturers again to keep their business literally running 24 7 non-stop because you know machines don't get tired and as long as they have their energy source uh, they can keep running so um people could work in shifts right and when one group left you bring another group in so so the factory system and just you know the production the machines the assembly line just the automation and the system they had in place was absolutely totally revolutionary and just tremendously increased the amount of production um, of, um, of, of, of cotton cloth and, and clothing that, that was produced. So anyways, um, there we go, you guys. We talked about energy sources, the early industries, uh, the inventions. In our next video, we will get into the social impact of the IR, and that's gonna relate to living and working conditions. It's gonna get into uh, various social classes that are gonna be formed, new ideas, that are going to be formed and come out of the IR. So we'll get into that in our next video. So, hey, um, look forward to it and I'll uh, see you back then. Bye.